Have you ever found yourself thinking about something negative and not even know you've been doing it for several minutes or longer? Maybe you've been rehearsing a difficult conversation with someone multiple times in your head without planning to do it. It's not congruent with a prosperous mindset, is it? Let's talk it over. This is Prosperity and Something Greater. Hello, everyone. This is Rem Jackson. In today's episode, I interview Tina Del Bono, who is my friend and my business partner. She's a practice management consultant from Sonoma County, California, and is the director of our Virtual Practice Management Institute. And she guides our members' office staffs to help them really transform into the A team they can become as they work together. And today, she shares her perspective, experience, and thoughts on prosperity and something greater. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the podcast today. I'm really, really excited because today I get to talk about this very, very interesting topic of prosperity and you know what it is to you, and, and is there something even greater beyond that that we can be looking for? And I'm doing this with a colleague of mine, a partner of mine, a dear friend of mine, Tina Del Bono. And Tina, of all the people that I could really spend some time with and talk about this really interesting concept that's part of all of our journey. You're certainly um, at the top of the list of people that I respect and admire, and and I'm very interested in, in how you see all of this because I've learned so much from you personally. So first of all, welcome to the podcast. Thank you very much, Ron. I'm looking forward to this. Okay. So, you know, let's just jump into this. Uh, you know, one of the things I've been trying to do with this podcast is is just sort of get some baseline about, you know, what is prosperity? You know, and I talked about, you know, a lot of different things. There's definitions, there's ways to look at this. But, you know, before, you know, we would get into any of that sort of stuff, I just would say, you know, for you, this idea of prosperity, you know, how do you define prosperity for you? Well, you know, uh, I'm all for money and making money. I think that having uh, financial resources sure makes things a lot easier for each of us and being able to care for those in our families and outside of our families. But when I think of prosperity and fortune, (laughs) it comes to my mind and being fortunate. So for me, alongside having you know, financial resources, which some of times have been very uh, little, and sometimes there's plenty to go around and help people, is uh, looking at how fortunate I am as uh, an individual, as a mom, as a grandma. And I think that when we can focus, or for me, when I can focus on, you know, gratitude, gratefulness, how fortunate I am, I'm really rich and it's so easy to get sidetracked uh, off of that. And it's a constant reminder of, gosh, you know, I'm sitting here talking to you, one of my favorite people looking out of this, my window and beautiful wine country. I, you know, I can see a hill um, half mile away filled with beautiful vineyards and, you know, just thinking that, wow, I'm really, I'm really fortunate. And therefore, I will prosper as long as I keep that frame of mind. Well, could I share something that I've been sharing quite a bit with people when I've been out on the road and speaking? I saw a very short video, and I know you've seen this because you were at the Top Practices Summit when we we, um, shared it. And it was a video of a man who was sitting on a piece of cardboard in front of some public building. He had a sign that said, I'm blind, please help. And he had a can there that the occasional person would come by and put money in the can. And th- this little short, it's about a minute and a half video. The woman walks up and stands in front of him 
and uh, he reaches down and, and he and he touches her shoes, which you know he is sort of like recognizing her. He's, he sees her shoes and he knows what her shoes she's wearing. She kneels down, she grabs his sign, she turns it over, and she writes something on that sign. Then uh, she puts it back and she walks away. And then uh, the, the the video moves on. A little time has elapsed. And now the man's sitting there and everyone that comes by is dropping money on his cardboard. You know, he can't even keep all the money in the can that he's got there. She comes by. The same woman reappears. She stands in front of him. He touches her shoes. So he, he recognizes her and he says, what did you do to my sign? And she said, I wrote the same, only different. And what she wrote on his sign was, it's a beautiful day and I can't see it. Mm, yeah. And so, and everybody saw that. And of course, the, the the point of the video had something to do with, you know, messaging and how you say things. But the point of the video to me was, it's a beautiful day and I can't see it. And Tina, I mean, there you are today, you're in your home office um, it, we're we're recording this at a time that everybody's staying home for right. all those uh, reasons that we all are well aware of. And you're looking out at the same thing I'm looking out at, only very different. I mean, you get to look out at green and verdant vineyards, or actually right now they're probably dormant, but uh, but you, you, you can see the, yeah, I know exactly what those vines look like, um, but there they are all in a line. I'm looking out my window at these beautiful giant rock mountains right or that are just west of Las Vegas by my home here. And it is a beautiful day. Yeah. And you, however, could be completely absorbed inside your head with whatever's bothering you. And certainly right now there's a lot on people's minds and that's very real, but you're choosing to see the beauty and the blessings that you have in your life. Yeah. And like you said, it's so easy. It can go from one moment to the next. And we need to be aware and continue to pull ourselves back into, I'm fortunate, I'm grateful. You know, what is it? Because it just happens so quickly, Rem, that we get sidetracked. No, we really, really, truly do. And I'm actually going to ask you about that in just a moment, but I wanted to kind of back up about one traffic light and say, so Tina, what was the, I mean, what was the moment that you had the defining moment or event that brought you to your career path? You know, I just kind of, I think people would be interested. I want everybody that's my guests on this to sort of discuss, how'd you get where you are? Well, it's an interesting story. I'll try to condense it. I was actually a medical transcriptionist working out of my home, uh, raising my, my three children. And I always wanted to be in the medical field. And I had the opportunity, one of the doctors who I did transcription for had a back office opening, very small podiatry office, just him and one other person. And uh, so I thought, well, all my kids were in school at that time. Uh, I can work some hours. And it ended up being Dr. Hollander, who many years later, we end up marrying. But I went into his office and being an entrepreneur, my whole family is entrepreneurs. I mean, generations. And I noticed right away something was wrong and how the office manager was doing things or not collecting money. There was just, it didn't make sense to me. Uh, long story short, found out that she had been embezzling. She had Liddy's contracts, uh, laps. He was doing surgeries and not getting paid for it. And, you know, when I, and I brought this to him and we let her go and he said, okay, now you can do this. And I thought, I don't even know what you do. And he said, it has something to do with some codes you do. You'll figure it out. And so I did figure it out with the help of a couple of other office managers in town. And it was very small at that time. There was just a handful of podiatrists. I went to their offices. I asked them if they could help me. And they gladly did. They gladly gave of their time. I took them lunch and took them out to lunch, but they, they showed me the ropes. And I thought, okay, I don't ever want this to happen to another doctor. I'm going to figure this all out and how I can maybe uh, protect this doctor from ever having this happen again. Long story short, nine months later, I'm diagnosed with breast cancer. And uh, while I was waiting to find out 
what, uh, how, how bad it was. I thought I had this shift moment and it, my mind just shifted that I wanted to do something. If this is it, would I be happy with the way my life has been? And yes, I was had three beautiful children. I mean, you know, yes, to a certain extent, but I wanted more. And I wanted to help people. I've always been someone who has been a support person. I wanted to help people. And I thought, you know, Lord, if I make it through it, I want to help other doctors. That's what I want to do. Well, lo and behold, I did make it through it and began my journey of trying to figure out how to run a medical practice. And at that time, Dr. John Holtman was a big practice management guru. I sat at his feet, listened to everything that he said, but I knew that there had to be a simpler way to explain it to people. And that's what where it began. And I started to, you know, trying to figure it out, writing it down, growing a practice. We have a very successful practice. It grew quite large. And then about 16 years later, lo and behold, diagnosed with breast cancer again. That shift moment rocked my soul. I was just, I always thought it might happen, but I, you're never prepared for it. And it, but it reminded me of my foundation of what I really wanted to do. I want to help other physicians and their medical staff create great workplaces where not only they are prosperous, but they love doing what they do for the people that they serve. And Ram, right after that, as you know, we began the Virtual Practice Management Institute, working on it over that period of a year or so after my last breast cancer. And so that's where I am. And I'm so excited because it's only getting better every single day. The more people that we're reaching, the more we're able to use technology to reach our members and to reach those future members to help them create the most amazing medical practices that patients have ever been to. And I'm excited. I'm excited every day when I think about what it is that we can do and who I get to talk to, to help. So that's my story. Oh, I love that. And the, you know, I think Again, prosperity, as we think about this, you know, this larger concept, a part of it is involves authenticity and being true to yourself. And no matter what your circumstances are right now, knowing that, you know, this is my true, what I truly want to do, what I want to be. And then, you know, it took you time and effort and whatever, but you, you brought that all into fruition. And I think that is a component of being prosperous is feeling that you're contributing and you're, you're, you know, you're using your talents and your experience and all the rest of it. Well, regardless of what that is that you personally want to do and yours, you know, as you described is to help other folks that are managing practices in that entrepreneurial mode do well. So I want to come back to the, where we were before. And that is, so we all have challenges. I mean, like you said, daily, right? We all have challenges that we're facing. We all have obstacles that we face. Some of them are greater than others. Some of them are more severe than others, but can you share, you know, what do you do? How do you deal with your daily journey and what is it that can actually trip you up? Well, are we talking about at work or are we talking about personal life? Yes. yes. Okay. Both. All right. Well, daily journey of I, I, I pretty much follow kind of what you do, Rem. First thing in the morning, I try and smile and I thank the Lord that I'm here and want to know what I can do. You know, as I put my feet on the ground, I, you know, thank the Lord that I have feet and I can stand up and I can walk. I have my health right now. And that starts me out on the right foot, so to speak. But, you know, then I can go get on my treadmill, listen to something motivational, get off. And all of a sudden I've got two text messages. People are sick and they're not going to come in. Things aren't going to go well. I have a choice then of how I'm going to react to that. And sometimes I don't do a very good job. Uh, I'm human. And other times I think yeah, I bring myself to think 
you know what, the people who are at that office deserve the best. And I'm going to go and give them my best. And it's that, that choice that I can, that I can make. And what trips me up is me looking inward and going, you know, I'm tired of this. Uh, Why do I have to do this? Why can't everybody just show up to work like I do? When I start thinking down the wrong trail and it becomes about me, that trips me up. And instead of focusing on, hey, what can I do? Hey, I'm going to stop by and I'm going to get some healthy muffins for them. Or, hey, you know what? I'm going to ask, make sure that I spend a few minutes today asking them how they are because they don't like being short staffed either. It's not about me. It's about us as a whole. And it, like I said, it's a constant effort to be able to do that. And I think that for myself, it takes, it's discipline and it's a choice. It's a definitely a choice, isn't it? We have that ability to say it's a beautiful day and I can't see it, or it's a beautiful day and I refuse not to see it, you know, every single day. Tina, what's the top strategy that you use uh, to keep you headed in the right direction and not slipping back into your old habits? Well, I've been doing this now for going on seven years, Rem, and I used to get up faithfully every morning, be at the gym at 515. And I did that for about 12 years. And then uh, some things came up at home and it just didn't work with the office of doing it that way. So I got some in-home gym type stuff at my uh, house and I got a treadmill. And actually this was after the last time that I was diagnosed with breast cancer. I had just started it maybe like a year or so before. And I get on my treadmill three times a day, first thing in the morning at lunch if I'm not walking outside and also in the evening before John comes home and I put in six to seven miles a day, always, unless I'm traveling six days a week, sometimes seven days a week. But while I'm on that treadmill, I watch and listen to people like Brendan Bouchard, people, you know, uh, like Tony Robbins and uh, Marie Forleo and People that are feeding my mind or audio books that I'm listening to. I listen to Obstacle is the Way. I not only read it, but I listen to it. And feeding my mind with good, positive things. And it, that has made, I can't tell you. Well, I know you know because you read every day too. The difference in my life. I'm a pretty disciplined person anyway, but this has made the difference that I can make that choice so much easier when I take a step off the right trail and start looking at, you know, I can't see the day, you know, and feeling bad for myself. Although, I mean, sometimes we do feel bad for ourselves and we have to be allowed to do that. But it keeps me back on the track because I'm feeding my mind and my soul with good, positive things. That's just I mean, such really, really good advice. It it really does come down to that steady, steady, you know, and, and again, as Jeff Olson says in the slight edge, just easy to do, easy not to do, but it's so easy to stop that. And then yes. all of a sudden you're not doing it. Yeah. I mean, I always say masterminding, you know, in, in times like right now, this is times of great stress for everyone. You need other people. You can't get in the same room with Brendan Bouchard or the other people that you mentioned, but you can read their books. You can yeah. listen to their their podcasts. You can listen to audio books as you talk about and mastermind. That's you know that's the whole point of what we do in top practices is sharing good ideas. Mostly, just you know, when you're having a bad day, someone else is not having a bad day, and we need each other. Otherwise, you'll have what my brother has always called an Amtrak derailment in your head, and um, yeah. nobody needs that. And that that discipline of of staying on message and just you know, your subconscious mind is always listening, always listening, always listening. And if you're if you're talking to it and you're saying, and today our number one goal is to have a good day. I mean, that is my number one goal every day to have a good, beautiful day. And if I think about it, 
in spite of all the challenges, all the headwinds, all the problems, it's a pretty good day. Yeah. The people listening to this podcast, you know, they're interested in achieving their own version of prosperity. What advice could you share? Well, I think I know they have to be able to define it. If they can't define it, then they're never going to know whether they are obtaining it or not. So first of all, it's to define it. Then it is that slide edge effect. It's what can I do every day moving towards that and knowing and reality is, you know, you're going to get those stink bombs, like you said, Rem. And sometimes it's more than three a year. Sometimes you're thinking I'm living in the cesspool. How am I going to get out of this? But if they, they first define it and they can keep that in front of them, like, you know, Dr. Wishney does, and I have stickers all over and, and quotes reminding me of what I believe, what I truly believe in and where I'm going. That keeps me going. So they have to define it and then they've got to put it in front of them every single day, all day long and work towards that. And then realizing the little wins. Yeah, today was a great day. Yeah, today I didn't have that voice in the my head saying, you know, things aren't so great. You know, no, I didn't. Wow. You know, I love it when I'm driving and I'll be I'll be thinking these great things. I'll be doing my grateful list, Rem. Am I, you know, saying them out loud when I'm driving? And then all of a sudden, this crazy thought will come in my mind and I'll get so upset and totally. And I'm thinking, whoa, get out of here. I'm not going to go that way. And continuing to seek. What am I grateful for? Where am I going? And it takes it is an effort. It doesn't. I don't I think there are some people who can achieve it as, as they move forward, it becomes easier. I'm finding the older I'm getting, the more I'm able to define it and see it and um, grab onto it. And I think for those of us who work with millennials and stuff, it's, it's instilling that in them now, telling them about that now so that they can learn it much earlier than we did, you know? And so Define it and then just keep working towards it. I love that. When you mention the fact that that idea can just get in there. I mean, it's so true. Like you're you're walking along and I mean, this will happen to me. I mean, I'm very vigilant about this, but this will happen to me. Like I'm, I've been walking every day now and that I've recovered from a little injury I had and I've been walking quite well. And it hasn't happened since I've been walking just recently here, but, but all of a sudden I'll be walking And I'll be having a conversation with someone in my head, one that I'm rehearsing because I'm one of those types. Like if the thing happens, I'm like, and I think I would say this and then, I mean, I have these whole big regale conversations in my head that are, you know, usually confrontations. I don't think about, you know, the, the, the the really good conversations that you just have, you don't rehearse those. And I'm, and all of a sudden I, I remember, you know, this happened to me. I'm like, what in the world, where did this come from? And I didn't even know I was doing it. And the trick is to is to get your antenna up and say, whoops, whoops. Yeah, yeah. We don't do that anymore, right? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, in prosperity, I mean, Tina, it's interesting. As I've been trying to just sort of, you know, sort through this really, really, really interesting idea. Because this goes beyond, the, the prosperity is more than success. Yes. Success is success. Um, prosperity is more than wealth. You know, wealth is wealth. And, you know, when you get into these definitions of prosperity, you know, it is, you know, uh, wealth is, is part of it, but there's all kinds of wealth and there's, there's financial wealth, which is being prosperous. There's emotional wealth, which is being even more prosperous. And where I'm trying to go, Tina, and, you know, we'll come back around to this, but something greater, something even greater than the sum of all of that wealth to some level of true satisfaction and joy. That's really what, what I think is the goal of this podcast. And it's a journey and I'm not suggesting that I'm I've arrived, but I want to roll along with everybody on this journey. So, right. So Dan, I want to ask you a question. I've decided I'm going to ask everybody this question just for fun and kicks. If you were a toy, 
any toy at all, what would it be and why? Okay. Uh, I would be a box of Legos. Um, everyone likes Legos, you know, not just children, but adults. And I know that I sat with six children a few weeks ago playing Legos and it was so much fun because when you have Legos, you're using your imagination to create whatever it is in your mind, but you have to think about it first. And so when we're in a creative mode, you know, that's when we can begin to change the world. If we close off to that creativity, we're squelching ourselves. So Legos gives us the opportunity to take a block and then look down and see a group of blocks and what can we make? What can we do with this? And I, as I watched the children that I was um, playing with, the smiles on their face when they would create something. And now Legos are so much different. They have flowers you can stick in there and windmills. And so you can really create some amazing things. And they go, look what I made. Look at it moves. Look, you know, and then one person had like a rocket ship and an airplane. And, you know, they built a car and they were so excited. And so I would want to be a lock box of Legos so that I could you know, help people to create and use their imaginations and change the world. I love it. I absolutely love it. That is, uh, all these answers. I've, 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 I was asked that question at a meeting years and years ago, and, uh, I've always just really liked it. It's a nice, um, it can be an icebreaker. It can be revelatory. It's a nice thing to think about. It's a, it's fun for most people when they first are like toy, what I don't know. And then, then you're like, well, I'm going to be asked. So I, I need to think about this. And um, what a lovely thing. Tina, I have one last question for you. And that is, I know there's a lot of them, but could you recommend one great book that we should all be reading? Uh, yes, I do have a, I mean, and I'm an avid reader, as you know, I've had, my library is extensive. And, but I have one, The Last Lecture by Randy Posh. Uh, if you haven't read it, it's an amazing, an amazing book. You know, Randy had a quote, well, he's had many quotes. And he, I don't know, have you read the last lecture, Ram? Yes. Okay. For those of the who don't know, Randy Posh was a professor at Carnegie Mellon. And he was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, had three small, small children. I get goosebumps. I'm holding the book right now, but it's just an amazing story. And my favorite quote is, we cannot change the cards we are dealt, just how we play the hand. And so that would be my recommendation. Well, that's a tremendous, tremendous book. I recommend everybody pick it up. Tina, I want to say thank you. Thank you. This is a, sort of a fun project that I'm embarked on here with the goal of really trying to find something greater than prosperity, which is when you look at it, prosperity just, again, I kind of holding that up now. It's higher than everything. It involves so much and it's a very rich topic to have one of the inaugural episodes of this podcast be with one of my dear friends and someone who I not only respect, but also love with you is a real joy. So thank you. Thank you very much. That's a, it's been an honor and a privilege, Rem, to know you. And thank you for inviting me on. The questions are great. They really make you think. Well, that's great. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks a lot. And Tina, I will talk to you soon. That I do know. All right. It's such a joy to work with someone like Tina every day. I hope you enjoyed listening to her thoughts and perspective as much as I did. She's an inspiration and a mentor. Prosperity for me is living today, for today, serving others, and creating wealth of all kinds for myself and anyone that I can influence. Let me know what you think. You can send me an email at rem at toppractices.com. Prosperity is the entire focus of top practices. Most doctors are struggling with the business of medicine, and those doctors that aren't truly understand that through association with other successful practitioners, they can take their success to the next level or something greater. 
like prosperity. Prosperity in business is a function of mindset, marketing, and management. And that's our mission at Top Practices. You can find out more about Top Practices, our marketing and management programs for doctors, our workshops, and annual summit at toppractices.com. Until next time, this is Rem Jackson. Smile when you wake up, and then have a really good day. Nothing is more important.